All right, cheers, folks, and welcome back to the Modern Horror Paranormal Activity Ramble. And today's movie is Paranormal Activity 3. All right, Paranormal Activity 3, I think, is one of the better entries in the Paranormal Activity franchise. I still put the first one kind of at the top slot, but I think number three is probably right underneath it in terms of which of the movies I like the most. All right, so at the start of Paranormal Activity 3, Katie is just about to go move in with Mika. And as part of what she's doing is she goes over to her sister Christie's house from Paranormal Activity 2 and asks to leave a bunch of stuff in, in her basement. Um, which one of the, the things that she leaves in there is a box of VHS tapes that the family had, which I think may have been stolen during the break-in in, in number two, but don't quote me on that. These, these are the VHS tapes that kind of comprise the bulk of the sources for Paranormal Activity 3. And also, I believe there's a second set of tapes in there from a different different era that is going to be the source of the footage in uh, the new Paranormal Activity that's coming out soon, The Ghost Dimension. But Paranormal Activity 3, after they establish that Katie is dropping off these tapes at Christie's house, is set in 1988, um, right, after, right after Katie's birthday. And it is... Katie and Christy as little girls living with their mother and her boyfriend, Dennis, who for some interesting reason actually looks a lot like Mika. I hope I'm not the only one who sees that. Another prominent character in the movie is also Dennis's assistant, uh, Randy. And Dennis and Randy work as wedding videographers, which is why in 1980s, Dennis has all this expensive... Um, all these expensive video cameras and editing equipment and all these monitors. So basically what happens is this just kind of drops us into the middle of this whole thing. I don't think Katie's birthday really had anything to do with triggering events. I guess the girls have only sort of been talking to this imaginary friend that they have named Toby, who surprise surprise is actually the, the demon of the whole Paranormal Activity franchise. All right, so just like the first one, this has a really basic story. So what sort of goes on is that... So one night, Dennis and the girl's mother are, you know, hanging out in the bedroom, and there happens to be... You know, getting extracurricular. And there happens to be an earthquake, and they catch on camera dust falling from the ceiling and kind of landing on this basic humanoid form. And this kind of sparks Dennis's curiosity, at which point he starts filming around the house and he becomes suspicious of the girl's uh, imaginary friend, Toby, um, who Christy is a lot more into than, than Katie is, it seems. You know, Katie kind of makes fun of Christy a lot, saying that Toby's not real. And, you know, this, so they have that kind of sibling dynamic going on. And all of this plays out with... Dennis kind of more and more obsessively trying to catalog any sort of strange events or behavior. You know, probably a little bit after the, the midpoint of the movie, Randy kind of proves himself to be one of the, the more intelligent characters in the franchise and uh, GTFOs right quick. But basically when these events sort of hit a major pitch, the whole family takes off to their grandmother's house who, surprise, surprise, happens to kind of be the leader of a coven of witches that is in league with the demon. And the girls get possessed and the mom gets, you know, th strangled and thrown on the stairs and Dennis gets snapped in half. Um, and I guess somehow the, uh, the two girls get mind wiped for it and the coven more or less raises them. So all the references to their mother in Paranormal Activity 1 and 2 I always thought were kind of interesting because is it Grandma Lois? Is it somebody else in the coven? Yeah, I don't really know. So one of the things that I think makes this a better movie than Paranormal Activity 2 is that they've sort of pulled back and simplified on, on their sort of their scaring tactics. So they have fewer cameras, less frantic editing. It's, it's a lot more steady. Cameras are set down on tables because it's the 80s and these things are heavy. Uh, they have one really cool gimmick that I thought was really, really effective where Dennis takes an oscillating fan, takes the fan part off and puts a camera on it. So you have a kind of panning back and forth motion with this with this camera so you know you have this area of the frame that you know you're about to get to 
and the the effects team can kind of put something in there you know when the camera's not looking and you don't know if something is going to show up and if something shows up you don't know what it's going to be so they do a couple of good moments where it kind of pops over and you see something and they also kind of subvert it where it pops over you're expecting to see something and you don't and it comes back and you see something but it isn't exactly what you were expecting to see Dennis really does remind me a lot of, of Mika's character from the first movie, although I think they wrote him better. They really kind of toned down the uh, unfortunately douchey behavior that, that Mika was known for. And it is kind of cool that they're sort of involving involving the demon more in the the two girls' backstories. Um, so you know, obviously with them being friends with Toby when they were, they were children. They sort of paid off what was going on in Paranormal Activity 2 when Allie and Brad had found the mention of people making deals with demons for wealth and power. Thinking that maybe, you know, Katie, Katie and Christie's grandmother or great-grandmother or something had, had made this deal. And it turns out that, that they had, and there's a whole coven of of these women who are in league with the demon. It also lends kind of an interesting sort of angle when Grandma Lois is is talking about um, Katie's mom having a son to, to obviously pay off the bargain with the demon. Yeah, so that's about all I can think of to say. I really like this movie. I don't think I can think of anything else to say. Paranormal Activity 3 is probably the second best in the, uh, the Paranormal Activity series. You know, we'll have to see if it retains its spot when the ghost dimension comes out in a little bit. But, um... Yeah, that's all. Stay tuned. Check back later for uh, Paranormal Activity 4. Cheers.